Mirage Island, one of the hardest places to reach in the Pokemon games. A mysterious island that on rare occasions appears in the middle of Route 130. The island itself is full of why nots and it holds a tree with one lychee berry, which is rumored to contain the power of the sea. So how do you get to the island? One guy in Pacific Lockdown said the following. Mirage Island. It must become visible and invisible depending on the weather conditions that make mirages appear. Or is it really appearing and disappearing? I hate to break it to you buddy, but the weather never really changes in this place. So if it's not the weather, what makes the island appear? Well there's this old man in the same house as before that is always on the lookout for the island. Most of the time he will say, I can't see Mirage Island today. But on really rare occasions, he will be able to see the island. So how does the game decide whether the old man can see the island or not? Well, every day the game randomly generates a number between 0 and 65,535, so in the range of a 16-bit integer. If this random number is equal to the lower half of the personality value of a Pokemon in your party, then the old man can see the island. The personality value of your Pokemon determines stuff like gender, nature, ability, stuff like that. But we won't go into detail here. All you need to know is that it's a 32-bit integer and the lower 16 bits are used in the comparison for Mirage Island. Okay, zooming back out, if you only have one Pokemon in your party, the chance of getting to Mirage Island stays at 1 in 65,536. But with a full party of 6 Pokemon, your odds are a lot better with a chance of 1 in 10,923 of getting to the island. The odds of getting to Mirage Island with a full party are close to that of getting a shiny Pokemon, which are 1 in 8,192. There's one major difference though. The value of Mirage Island only chases once a day. This means that if you see the old man every day with only 6 Pokemon, it's gonna take about 10,000 days or about 30 years before you can reach the island. But thankfully we can see the old man with more than 6 Pokemon a day. In our PC we have 14 boxes and each box holds 30 Pokemon. So in one day we can see the old man with a total of 420 Pokemon and this will bring the odds up to 1 in 156. So by taking 70 trips to the old man every day, you can see Mirage Island about twice a year. Each trip takes about 1 minute and 15 seconds, so you'll need to spend about an hour and a half every day in order to get to the island. Well that's not really ideal is it? The fact that you have to do this every day for 156 days is not really that fun. Of course there's a chance of getting there on the first day of trying, but it's not guaranteed. It's not even guaranteed to get there after 156 days of trying. You could be stuck here for years if you're really unlucky. We have to find a better way to get to the island. Hmm. So as I mentioned earlier, every day a new value is generated for the island, right? And the game keeps track of time by using a real time clock that's powered by the battery inside the cartridge. So what would happen if we take out the battery? We would basically stop time and prevent the game from generating new values for Mirage Island. Now we need to figure out what the actual value of Mirage Island is. Figuring out what the value is from an existing save file is impossible without extracting data from the cartridge. But as it turns out, the value of Mirage Island is always zero when starting a new game. So if we take out the battery and start a new game, the value will never change and will always stay zero. The same thing will happen if you reach max playtime in a game with a functional battery. The battery needs to be working, because otherwise you will be stuck on the last value that was generated. Now all we need is a Pokemon with no personality and we're done. The chance of finding a Pokemon that has a personality value of 0 is 1 in 65,536. So by leaving it up to random chance, it's gonna take forever. But luckily we can find one using RNG manipulation. It turns out that when the battery runs dry, the RNG in the game becomes really predictable. And with existing tools, we can figure out at what frame we can find the Pokemon we are looking for. Okay, so let's do this. Let's start a new game and make our way to Mirage Island. We'll be playing this game up until we reach Pacific Lockdown. And this took me about 6 hours to reach. Now that we're back at Pacific Lock with a new save file, we know for sure that the value of Mirage Island is zero. The only thing standing between us and Mirage Island is getting a Pokemon with the correct personality value. So how can we do that? Before I mentioned that we can do this with RNG manipulation. By getting a Pokemon at a specific frame, we can get the personality value that we want. 
and we're able to do this because the battery is taken out of the cartridge, making the RNG really predictable. First we need to find a way to get a Pokemon with just a single button press. That way we're easily able to get a Pokemon on a specific frame. I personally chose one of the fossil Pokemon to get the job done. We can recover the fossil in Rustboro City and we can get to Anorit by pressing the A button once the following text appears. The fossil was an ancient Pokemon. Anorit it was. Okay, so next question. How do we figure out at what frame we need to get the Anorit? We will be using a tool called Pokefinder. This tool is able to generate what kind of IVs and personality value you will get at what specific frame. And after generating some values I found that the first frame we can find the Pokemon we're looking for is at frame 19,396. When we take a closer look at the personality value, we can see that the lower half of it matches the current value of Mirage Island. Like I said before, only the lower half of the personality value is used for Mirage Island. Other things we know from it is that the Anorit is female and that it has a mild nature. 19,396 frames. The game is running at 60 frames per second, so it's gonna take about 5 minutes and 23 seconds for each attempt to hit the right frame. Before starting to attempt to get it, we need a bit more stuff. I wanna be able to figure out how many frames we're off at each attempt. To figure out what frame we actually hit, we need to know what the nature is and we need to figure out what the specific IVs for each stat of the Pokemon are. The nature we can easily get from the stat screen, but the IVs are gonna be a bit more difficult. To calculate the IVs, we'll be needing a couple of rare candies to see how the stats change when the Pokemon levels up. Then we put all the values in an IV calculator and then we're able to find out what specific frame we've actually hit. The last thing I need before starting attempts is an accurate timer. I used a tool called Eon Timer for this. In this tool you can simply enter what specific frame you want to hit and then we'll start counting down until it hits zero. Now that we have everything ready, it's about time for our first attempt. We already know that we're looking for a female Anorit with a mild nature. So anything different than that is already not what we're looking for. But these first attempts are mostly to make sure we're actually close to hitting the right frame. But it would be insane to get it on the first attempt. After 5 minutes of waiting we got our first Anorit and it's a male with a sassy nature. And by leveling up the Anorit with rare candies I was able to calculate its IVs. When we take a closer look at the IVs, we can see that for the HP and the special attack stat, we got a range of possible IVs. This is not an issue because we can enter this range in the Pokefinder tool we used earlier. And after entering all the IVs and its nature, I found that the Anorit we got is from frame 19519. That is 123 frames off, or about 2 seconds. That is a lot of frames off from what we want to hit. To make sure I didn't make a mistake, I did another attempt with the same settings and I got an Anorit from frame 19515. Since we're so far off from our goal, we'll need to calibrate our timer to get a bit closer. With both attempts we're about 120 frames off, so we'll calibrate our timer with that amount. This is the exact reason why we need to calculate the IVs, to make sure we're actually close to hitting the right frame. Now that we have calibrated the timer, it's time for our third attempt. We should be a lot closer with this attempt, but we'll calculate the IVs to make sure. On this attempt I got an Anord with a modest nature, and after calculating the IVs I found that the Anord we got is from frame 19411. This is a lot better from the previous attempts, but we're still 15 frames off. I calibrated the timer again by 15 frames and did another attempt. And then, on my next attempt, we got him. A female Anord with a mild nature. After only 4 attempts and about 20 minutes of trying, I already got it. I went straight back to Pacific Lock and there were the magic words waiting for me. Oh, oh my, I can see Mirage Island today. I raced east towards Route 130 and there was the island. After almost 20 years of playing these games, I was finally able to reach Mirage Island. Here I was greeted with Wynos that wanted to kill me with Destiny Bond and the famous Lychee Berry. Honestly, it feels great to be on this island. I've always wanted to go here when I was younger. And now that we've reached Mirage Island, we've also reached the end of our journey. Thank you for watching.